Hey everyone, it's Steph. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, well welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the books that I read in the month of January. So new year, new books, and excited to chat about them with you. We're going to start right off. I read a lot of books in the month of January, so I don't have them all included in this video. I just picked some of my favorites to talk about. First up, we're going to start the first release of 2021. Best Laid Plans by Sarah Eden. This was released on New Year's Day, and let me tell you, it was so good. Loved the romance, but the side characters are going to be featured in their own story, which the author just announced is coming out this October of 2021, so I'm super, super excited for that, and I'm interested to see how that story progresses. So this story was really great. Introduced some new characters introduce a new setting or taking place in Bath or Regency era and really enjoyed it. Then I ended up doing a reread of the same author's story Seeking Persephone which is much earlier in the timeline of this connected series but it's so good so definitely one that I enjoyed reading. Then we're going to fast forward to The Match by Sarah Adams. This is an indie author and I was really excited to get to her contemporary romances because I've read her historical romances at the end of last year and thoroughly enjoyed them. This is a totally different tone. This is really fun. Closed door romance, so we have lots of chemistry, but we don't uh, see anything behind closed doors if you catch my drift. So really great character development. Loved the disability representation in this. There's a service dog in this story. Loved the two main characters and seeing how that story progressed. It was such a sweet romance story and I just devour the story so quickly because I just couldn't put it down. It was so good. Which leads me to the next book that I read in January, which is the second book, The Enemy. I had to think for a second. This was such a good enemies to lovers story. The chemistry was there. The tension was there between those two in such a great way, while also having a really great story. It was entertaining. It was funny. This author is really great with her humor, and I just love the way that it's very bubbly and funny and happy but still heartfelt and still has great character development. So thoroughly enjoyed these two reads and definitely will be reading more from this author. I think she just announced she has another book coming out I want to say in April of 2021 so definitely something to keep an eye out. Next one we have is a disability representation. I do not love everything about this book but I did want to talk about it. It's called Say What You Will. And I liked that this had cerebral palsy representation. I liked that this talked about a character who is a senior in high school, ready to graduate and be out in the world, considering college, and also talking a lot about accessibility, assistive technology. I liked that discussion. This talks a lot about her mother who treats her like she's a child when she's really on the verge of adulthood and not recognizing that just because she has a condition that might make her physically look different than others doesn't mean that she's a child and up here and that she doesn't have to be treated like an adult. So that leads to some mishaps that turn into problems in the, in the second half to two thirds of the way through the book. I didn't love the way the story was developed and the way the book ended. It just wasn't something I was a fan of. So I did like certain themes of the book. I liked the disability representation. I liked getting to learn more about this girl going through school with cerebral palsy. I just didn't like where the characters went and how the story ended. I want to talk about it, share my thoughts with you. I didn't hate it, but it was definitely more like a three star read for me and it was kind of like, meh. Nah. I'm glad I gave it a try and I'm going to keep looking for more books with disabilities, which we have another one coming up next. This one, The Silence Between Us was about a girl. She goes to a deaf school. She has a younger brother who I want to say has cystic fibrosis. Yes, CF. Her mom, who's a single working mom, ends up getting a job that relocates him halfway across the country. The closest deaf high school is an hour away. She ends up going to the public high school in her neighborhood. She is the only deaf student. We get to see what it's like for her to go around with her ASL interpreter and seeing a lot of things that pop up as difficulties for people who are hard of hearing or deaf. It's really, really interesting to see that on a social level with her peers, as well as with her teachers. So for somebody who has an education background, somebody who has some degree of hearing loss, 
I really enjoyed seeing what this story portrayed. It was very accurate. It showed a lot about the differences between hearing aids, cochlear implants, or choosing neither of them. A lot of the problematic ways that people interact with interpreters instead of with the deaf person themselves and making eye contact, especially in this educational setting. A lot of adults interacting exclusively with the interpreter when the interpreter is clearly only interpreting the high school student's thoughts and what she's saying. And instead of communicating with her directly, so many of them are communicating with the interpreter. We see that a lot of faux pas or people who don't know how to interact properly with deaf people. It's nice to see the problems and the ways that people work around that in order to be respectful of the deaf community, in order to make them feel included and welcome and not an excluded part of the world and the conversation. So I enjoyed seeing those things brought up. I enjoyed the way that it was an educational experience for people who might not know that already. And also talked a lot about the difference between hearing aids and cochlear implants. I really enjoyed seeing that. We also see that one of the students in her new school ends up starting to learn sign. So she's teaching him proper sign etiquette. It's very clear what is spoken out loud and what is used with sign language. And what I really enjoyed was that the sign was translated well. For the book. So if you're not familiar with American Sign Language, it is not the same as the English language. It is different. The syntax, the sentence structure is different. So they incorporate that well into the book and I really enjoyed that. It was very easy to differentiate between the two. The romance was really sweet, but I really liked the way that hearing loss was represented in this book. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Love this cover. And definitely would love to see more books like this, which an accurate representation of what it's like for someone to go about the world with a disability, how education can be more improved to be inclusive, and how the world can just make things more accessible for people with different disabilities. So really thoroughly enjoyed this book, loved it, and definitely recommend. Next up we have a series, but the second book in the series is my favorite. The book I'm going to be talking about is Keep Your Shirt On, and the first one in the series, which is what originally caught my attention, was, was the title, A Man Worth Shaving For. So I, of course, was laughing hysterically when I saw that. really enjoyed that these stories in this series, which the author is still continuing to write, is very body positive, is very much about women supporting other women, accepting them, regardless of differences, and having a positive, inclusive, welcoming space great great themes but I'll tell you why the second one is my favorite. Keep Your Shirt On had a great enemies to lovers uh, next door neighbor romance. We also get to see something that we don't see too often in a body positive story where we see a woman who is actually kind of underweight and we see that she is sometimes the subject of rude comments implying that she has an eating disorder or something to that effect and cruel comments that no one should be subjected to regardless of weight and we get to see an interesting side to that. And something else that was really neat about this book is that it shares many of the same scenes from book one, A Man Worth Shaving For, but from a different character's perspective. So we get to see scenes that we recognize from book one, even though this can be read as a standalone, it's very self-explanatory. You can follow it very easily. It's neat to see the same scenes from different perspectives and get to see kind of the flip side of what's happening on the other end of things. Thoroughly enjoyed it. This reminded me of The Enemy by Sarah Adams uh, with the enemies to lovers and the great chemistry between the two characters. Both are closed door romances and just really, really well written and thoroughly enjoyable and funny. So definitely recommend them. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a book that I read next because of the disability representation, but I will be honest with you, I didn't love this book. I picked it up because it had a deaf character and thought I'd give it a go. It's called You're Welcome Universe, and this talks a lot about a deaf girl who is in high school who uses graffiti art to basically express herself and her style. I didn't love the main character because her attitude, which you can understand to a degree, and you understand you're reading a young adult book, and that teenagers go through a lot, and this character had been through a lot, but there wasn't a lot of change with her attitude. There wasn't a lot of growth for her. The overall story just was very meh for me. I think I gave this like two and a half stars. It wasn't a fan. It felt more about the graffiti art than about the character's story. And I love art. Art's great. I really do enjoy learning about art, but this was like, too much just art focused even for me. So wasn't a huge fan, like the disability representation, but much more so in The Silence Between Us than Your Welcome Universe. Glad I gave it a go, would I read it again? No. Do I recommend it? Mm, I think there are a lot better choices out there than this. So just thought I'd share. 
All right, next up we have Happily Ever Afters. This is a young adult story about a girl who is changing high schools, going from the regular public high school to an arts creative high school. In order to go to the school, she has to move. So she's in a new neighborhood. She ends up having to carpool with the neighbor across the street who goes to her school, and he is into cooking. She is going to this creative high school for her writing, and she loves to write romance stories. When she starts to sit down for a creative writing class, she can't get that flow of ideas out on the page, and it is a struggle, and she starts to have this crisis of, I thought this is what I was meant to do, and why is this not working? And I think for anybody who's creative, to any capacity, whether it's for work or for fun, we can all understand that there are times when creativity is just not flowing like we want it to, and I think we can all relate to this creative journey. Enjoyed the story, thought the characters were really sweet. I really, really loved the main male character. He had such a sweet heart, and he was so kind and thoughtful, and I really enjoyed seeing the development of those two in their relationship, and it was just thoroughly enjoyable. I also really enjoyed that she had a brother with disabilities, so we get to see how that changes the family dynamic, the interaction with a non-disabled sibling and their parents versus the attention that the disabled parent gets, and it's just to see that dynamic and to see how that brings them closer together as a family, which we see later towards one of the last scenes of the book. We see someone who basically like freezes up when he sees the whole family and meets this girl's disabled brother and seeing the problems when we can't just accept and embrace people for who they are and just take them all in stride and make them all feel welcome and included. I liked that the author incorporated that into the story, so I really enjoyed reading the story. It was such a sweet romance and I really liked how the story concluded. I was just like, oh yay. Many meaningful messages in the story. So glad that I read this. This just came out this month in January. Next up we have Engaging Mr. Darcy. This is a modern retelling of Pride and Prejudice. I thought this was cute. It was a light, fast read. It was sweet. It was interesting to see how we modernize the problems between Wickham and Georgiana. So we do see this adapted well for a modern audience in a modern setting. We see creative ways where the main characters still have similar names, if not all the same names, to their original characters. The Bennet sisters are almost entirely the same. Fitzwilliam goes by Will. Charles Bingley goes by Charlie. So it's interesting to see how we adapt these names to a modern setting. I love the original Pride and Prejudice, so I was glad I gave this story a go and could enjoy it. Next up we have The Cousins by Cara McManus. This came out last month in December of 2020. I really wanted to get to this because I've read her other stories and thoroughly enjoyed them. This is a young adult mystery slash thriller. If you have seen the movie Knives Out, this book reminded me of it very much because we have a family who basically is a bit dysfunctional. Grandma owns most of this island near Nantucket and Connecticut area. And she, one day, just owns all four of her children, essentially says, I never want to see you again. They're all independent at this point. It's not until 20 years later, there are three grandchildren who are reached out to and say, I'd like you to come and stay with me for the summer. Come stay and work at the hotel that I own. And I'd like to spend time getting to know you. Then we have this interesting, kind of confusing starter point where we're like, why does she want to see them after all this time? Why hasn't she reached out to her children in all this time? So we get to see these three cousins, they all travel to Connecticut, get to meet one another, and then confusing things ensue. They arrive to the island, this older gentleman kind of says some foreboding things, oh you're not supposed to be here, and then they get to the hotel they're supposed to be working at, and they're not expected. Slowly unraveling things that have happened in the past, how that's affecting the present, and it definitely is like a great juicy family mystery where something happened but we're not sure what, things start to unfold, people start to be revealed, and then it's like, what? I really enjoyed this story. It kept me listening, it kept me engaged. I listened to most of this audiobook in one day. I really enjoy listening to mysteries on audio. I don't know what it is. I just Then I can move around and do what I need to do without having to stop that mystery of finding out what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very patient when it comes to figuring out who done it in Mysteries. So thoroughly enjoyed this. I'm already looking for more books like this because I really enjoyed the plot and kind of 
the excitement of following along on this journey to figure out what the heck is going on in this story. So thoroughly enjoyed it and definitely recommend. Next up we have Somewhere Only We Know. This is a really cute, light, fluffy romance. We have this guy who's postponing going to college. And then we have this girl who is a K-pop star and basically just needs a break. And she ends up going out late one night because she's craving a hamburger. They end up exploring the city of Hong Kong together and going to do touristy things and keeping her identity a secret. And it's just really fun and light and enjoyable. And I've been really into this contemporary romance vibe lately. And just, it's nice to have something light and fluffy to read. So I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed the setting, which was unique and different. And I really enjoyed the development of the main characters who, um, you know, have some secrets from one another. And then of course, those secrets develop. I liked also that this main character feels like she's been on the corporate train for so long. She's kind of lost a bit of who she is and her creative energy. And I liked seeing her kind of rediscover that. As a musician myself, I'm just like, yes, reconnect with who you are and your your music and your creativity. So I really enjoyed seeing that. Next up, we have Pride and Prejudice and Other Flavors. So this was a really creative adaptation of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Our main guy, the Fitzwilliam Darcy character, he is a cook. He ends up working and catering an event for her family who was very wealthy and prominent and hosting an event in their family home. She is a surgeon, very much at the top of her field. She ends up having to work with his younger sister and that comes into play as well. Really interesting storytelling experience, even though we have definite similarities between Pride and Prejudice, the original work and this work, I really enjoyed on the part of the author, the creativity, the diverse cultural representation definitely made it her own and very unique and enjoyable. I did end up reading the second one, Recipe for Persuasion, which I also enjoyed. This one was a bit sadder of a tone and not because persuasion tends to have a teensy bit of that because, you know, these two met and then have been apart for several years. So we do see that same component, but in this story, we see the main female character has witnessed a traumatic event, trigger warnings of, um, mental illness, self-harm, alcoholism in this second story. So it was a little bit sadder, but the romance was so sweet, so good. Both of these are closed door romances, which I appreciated. Enjoyed the way that this was adapted to not only a contemporary time, but also a different culture and seeing that brought to the fruition in the story. In the recipe persuasion, we see these two characters who end up going on a baking show together. He is a celebrity, he's a soccer star, and she is an up and coming chef. Great story, thoroughly enjoyed it and thoroughly enjoyed seeing these, these two stories. And I'm looking forward to the third one, which comes out later this year. Next up, we have Falling for Your Best Twins Twin, and I'm getting excited because I started reading this before bed, and it was so good. I didn't stop reading it until it was done. <laughs> I just expected this to be a light, fun, enjoyable story, which it was, but it had so much humor, so much heart, and I just loved it. We have this girl who's a programmer. Is she a programmer? No, she's a coder. So we have computer science, coding, and then we have our main guy who was doing a startup for an app that he is developing and he's got a team there and he ends up finding this bug going on with this app which is about to launch in a few weeks. So he asks his sister, his twin sister, to, you know, help him out to see if you have any recommendations. She says, oh yeah, here's my best friend, Abby, come help her out. So we have Abby and Zane. The story is so good. A lot of great chemistry, a lot of enjoyable moments. Love the development of these two characters. Love the development of the relationship. Then of course we have problems and then they get resolved. But as far as rom-coms go, this was so enjoyable. So entertaining. Definitely reminds me a bit of Sarah Adams style. It's so enjoyable. I loved it. Definitely recommend. Then I read the second book in the series. She also is writing another book. She is going to continue with them. Love cliches is what the series is called. So we get to see all these big tropes that people see over and over again, but in super fresh and original ways, which makes them so enjoyable. The second one is Falling for Your Boss. There's an age difference here, more so than Emma. And in my mind, like Emma Woodhouse and Mr. Knightley is like, as far as I can like tolerate an age difference. <laughs> <laughs> and they're 16 years apart, so to read about anything more than that, I'm like, eeeh. 
but I will say they tackle that in this story. They talk about the age difference. They talk a lot in the beginning about that. And then we get to see how those walls kind of fall down and how we kind of focus on what really matters. The story was super well written. The development was super well written once you think you know the trajectory of the story. And then we have stuff thrown in. Oh snap. And then what's going to happen next? And now we're switching everything up again. And then the character who you thought was the awful best friend is actually a decent guy. He just seems awful. And then she always does a teaser. She did this at the end of the first book and the second book for the upcoming book. So we get to see after this great story concluded of this great romance, the last scene implies a relationship that is forthcoming in the next story but there's definitely going to be some butting heads they're not on the same page but there is an attraction there so i'm really interested to see where that story goes i want to read more by this author soon so that about wraps up this video i really hope you enjoyed watching this january wrap up if you made it this far leave me a little book emoji and don't forget to hit like on this video and subscribe if you want to see more fun bookish topics from me so i look forward to sharing more with you soon thank you so much for watching this january wrap up and i will see you soon have a great day